Is that better? That should be better. Thanks for the heads up, Virtue. That was my fault. Um, I'll do all that again. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to today's stream. I am Matt. I am the community manager for Payload Studios. I work on the lovely game that is known and we all love uh, called TerraTech. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Welcome to the stream. How is everybody? Uh, let me know in the chat. I'm genuinely intrigued to know how everyone is. Um, Zugbuck in here. Good stuff. Want to become famous? Go away, please. Um, links. Don't need them in chat. Um, so, welcome. Um, we are doing a, t a slightly different stream today. I'm going to be creating a mod using official mod support tools. So, mod support has been around for a while now. Uh, coming up to nearly a year, actually. That's crazy. And... Uh, we wanted to, you know, we've throughout that year, we've added a lot of functionality to the mod support tool. So you can now create weapons, wheels, or you can add your own weapons, your own wheels, your own blocks. Uh, you can create your own corporations. All that awesome stuff you can now do in TerraTech using our official mod support tools, which have been created by and, and curated by developers at Payload. Um, so what makes today a bit special and a bit, a bit different is that I have two of the people that helped make that mod tool on a phone call right now. Um, I'm going to introduce them in a second. But first, um, I'm just going to recap what we're going to be doing. So, we, we're literally, I mean, the title says it all, we're going to be making a mod from scratch, from, from literally setting everything up from the very, from, without having absolutely zero experience or knowledge of how to mod at all or anything on your computer. Um, I'm going to go step by step, or we're going to go step by step through how you can make a mod uh, and put it into the game. Um, so if you want to do it, if you want to go ahead and do it along with me, go ahead. Um, we can do it step by step. If you have any questions, chuck them in chat. Um, and the lovely people that I have on the other end of the phone will, uh, or on a, it's actually a Google Meet, um, spoiler alert, um, will be able to answer your questions. So the people that I have with me today are, you'll, you'll know them, you'll love them. Um, James Flannery. Um, those that play Minecraft, I love this is my favorite bit of trivia about James. Those that play Minecraft will know the name Flan or Flans Mod. James made Flans Mod, basically. Um, they are the the um, the main person behind that. Um, so go check that out. And James, I think you're there. Yes. Hello. Can hey. I can hear you. Chat should be able to hear you too. Chat. Let us know if you can hear James. That'd be great. Um, so James, this is, I mean, you, for fans of the series will recognise James, but if you wanted to give yourself a quick introduction, that'd be great. Um, yeah, so I've been at Payload Studios for like two years, and in the last year or so I've switched over from just doing general TerraTech uh, work to focusing on mod support. Um, and yeah, we've, we've sort of been taking like uh, taking a look at what the community has been doing with the unofficial mods before us, uh, taking a look at like my past history with uh, Minecraft modding, just sort of throwing that all together, trying to make the best use of the Unity tools we've got. And I've been building the mod tool and the sort of uh, the loading process for getting the mods into the game mm -hmm. and all the Steam Workshop integration stuff. So yeah, that's, that's, I'm, the, so I'm the programmer on that as well. James so, is the programmer, yeah. James does all the, all the fancy pants coding and all that good stuff. Now, on the other, uh, or the other, oh, it's the same line. I don't know, if, can we call it a line? I don't know. Um, we have uh, Rob Swinburne, who, uh, again, friends of the series will recognise Rob going way back when we were actually in the office and we were able to have other people sat next to me. Uh, Rob is one of our... Now, Rob, go ahead and unmute yourself. What's your official title? Because I always get this wrong. Uh, I'm a senior artist at Payload. There you go. I'm mainly a technical artist. I've been there about three years now. There you go. So Rob is a uh, technical artist, everybody. Um do you want to give yourself a better intro than that? I was a bit weak, to be honest. Do better. Was it? Yeah, do better. What do you want to know? Uh, well, I've, uh, what's the I've what's the what I think? What, what have you been working on recently that you can that you can talk about? <laughs> well, we've got some very exciting stuff coming up in the next update, which we probably can't talk about yet, can we? No. But it's exciting. So That's important. That. It's very exciting. Good. But also, while James has been doing all the hard work with the uh, the modding tool, I've been assisting from an art perspective, so that um, to make sure that it works with processes that we already have in place, uh, and it can be as easy as possible to use from an art point of view. Lovely. Well, there you go, everybody. So there we have James and Rob. Uh, 
the two uh, masterminds behind mod support. I, th- I feel that's a fair assumption. Uh, a, f- a fair, uh, a fair. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Assessment. Yeah, fair assessment. Masterminds. Um, and basically, they're going to be. I'm going to be doing all the all the legwork, and they're going to be helping me, guiding me along the way. Um, and again, chat. If you are interested in modding, um, if you've tried it and kind of got a bit confused, because it can be quite confusing, or you've taken a look at it and you've thought, ah, that's too much. I don't get it. Um, this is a good chance to. Jump in, uh, have a go, go along with us, and Robin and, and, and James will be there to answer any questions that you might have. Good. Well, all that out of the way, I'm going to switch to my... Oh, switch back. Let me go to... Oh, no, hang on. Oh, let's try that. No, that's Unity. Let's get rid of... All right, I'm going to put myself in the corner. Display capture. Hang on. Oh, I should have figured this out before, and I thought it was all set up. Sorry about this, chat. Um, let me edit this. Give me one second. Oh, there we go. Right, so I have a very blank canvas right now. Um, I literally have nothing installed. Well, I do, but I'm going to assume that I have nothing ready. I assume I have nothing on my computer that, that I need to get ready. The first thing that I'm going to do is... Oh, hang on. I'm going to get rid of all these because we don't need any of these. Oh, no. Hang on. I've got rid of Robin uh, and James. They are no longer on the call. Um, hang on. Yeah, it's Rob's in chat. Um, I've closed the chat by accident. That was my fault. I'm going to try and reopen it. Sorry, Rob and and James. I uh, completely accidentally just closed the chat. But welcome back. Um, Right, so I need to open a Chrome window. And basically, I'm going to show you, show everybody what, um, what to do. So, the first thing, obviously, that you can do is just go basically go to the Terratech uh, modding guide. We have a Terratech guide on our wiki. Um, if you head over to terratechgame.com, click the community tab, head over to our wiki, and in our wiki is the modding guide. It should be on the front page, just on the right-hand side here. Click the modding guide, and this is effectively everything you need to know in one handy spot. Um... So let's, and, and I'm, like I said, I'm going to go through this step by step, um, just so we have a working mod at the end of the stream. It shouldn't actually take that long. Um, now, a full disclosure, um, I'm going to be using some uh, pre-made assets. So we'll come onto it in a bit. You'll see it a bit later. But there's there's things like textures and and block models, 3D block models that that we need, uh, obviously, to add to the game. Um, and I I haven't got the time or the experience to go through that today um so i've asked rob to provide some example blocks and, and texture packs you may have already seen it uh, we have a, it's called the payload corp uh, it's already on steam on the steam workshop um that's just a corp that rob literally made um using sample blocks and stuff so i'll come on to that in a minute um but that's just to get i want to get that out of the way quickly um first things first we need to install unity hub um the first link is here again it's it's Pretty straightforward. Um, you can download Unity Hub from here. I already, I actually do have it already installed. Um, so this is pretty. It's just a, a standard um, Unity Hub. Download and install it, um, and then run it, um, and it'll look something like this. Uh, these are all my other projects. Again, ignore these. Just assume that this is blank. Um, I next need to install a. Um, the version of Unity that we use to develop Terratech. So, and I'll, James will be able to explain this in a lot more detail than I ever can, but basically Unity is the, the game engine, the software that we use, that, that, that Terratech was built from. Uh, and that's why we've, we've created asset packages, or Unity packages, beg your pardon, that, that allow us to modify and basically create our own mo- uh, mods in Terratech. Um, and that's effectively all the work that James has been doing. So, um, it's literally it's 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 as straightforward as copying and pasting in the, in the instructions. You'll see copy uh, paste this URL into your web browser. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to and it's going to prompt me to open Unity Hub. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
and that should effectively here we go right so there we go so these it will then install a ver this version of Unity uh, onto your Unity Hub or in, on, onto your computer, but it will appear in Unity Hub. Um, and these are the versions of the installs that we have. So again, Unity is the software that we use to develop TerraTech. This is the version of, Ter of Unity that we use to develop TerraTech with. Uh, there are loads of other uh, versions, but this is the one that we need. That's why we've downloaded it in the way that we have. Um, so the next thing we need are the two Unity packages. So there is one that we can just do as a direct download from GitHub. Um, so it should just start downloading. You can oh, you can't see it. You can see it just blow my uh, blow this shoulder here. You can just see it in my uh, in my thing. So that's downloaded. That's now in my download uh, folder. Uh, and the TerraTech unit, the TerraTech mod, uh, sorry, the TerraTech mod tool Unity package. That's going to open up uh, uh, Google Drive. This is where we host this particular file. I can just go ahead and right click that and click download and that's going to appear in my downloads down here as well there it goes you can see that down there um, there's a couple of other things that we could download I'm not going to go into too much detail but you can see here um, you'll need an, Im an image editing software for your skin textures and you'll also need a 3d modeling software for your block models um, GIMP is a good free example uh, of, a, of a, a, an image editing software. We tend to, I tend to use Photoshop. You guys know that I use Photoshop a little bit. Um, and the, for the 3D modeling, we recommend Blender because it's free and open source. Uh, and, it's, um, and I'm literally just reading this. And it supports the features that you'll need to make blocks. Um, but any 3D modeling package that can support the FBX model format will be suitable. Um, Rob, we actually use... Our own artists use 3DS, is it 3DS Max? Am I getting that right? We do use 3DS Studio Max, yes, but it is quite expensive. Very and expensive. Uh, doesn't really do anything that Blender can't do in terms of what you need for getting a model into the game. So there you go. So there's loads of options out there, but we recommend Blender. Just like Rob said, it's free and uh, yeah, you don't need anything. You don't need anything that fancy. Um, we just like to think that we're important. So we get expensive software. Um, there is a TerraTech modding resources folder um, that contains textures and model files. These are, uh, again, well, we can come onto this in a second, but these are just example block models, 3D models, and 3D textures um, that that we've provided for you to be able to just basically do what I'm doing, um, just on your own. Um, but yeah, Blender will do just fine. Um, good stuff. Duff. So what are we going to make? So, good question, Zugbug. Um, today we're going to make a gun. Um, but we're going to... Well, we're going to make everything, basically. We're going to make a corporation. Then we're going to make some skins to go in our corporation. Where are my fingers? Um, and then we're going to make a block to go in our corporation. And that block is going to be a gun because we can add things called block modules onto our block. I need a water. Oh, no, I've run out of water. I'm going to get a very dry mouth. A lot of talking. Um... Doesn't matter. I'll persevere. So again, using this, um, using the, the, the modding guide, I can create a project. So I have Unity set up. I've, in I've installed the latest or the, the version of, of TerraTech that we need. I'm going to go to projects. Uh, again, ignore all these. Um, I'm going to click this drop down. I'm going to click the version of, Terra of Unity that we've installed. And I'm just going to give my project a name. So this is a project. So this is different from the actual mod title. This is just a Unity project, like any project that you have in any sort of software, really. Um, so I'm just going to call it Stream Mod because we're on stream. And I'm just going to save it into my local folder. Make sure your 3D uh, is selected. That I don't know what any of yours are, but just make sure that 3D is selected. That's quite important. Uh, now, when I hit Create, it's going to take a few minutes to open up Unity, um, but eventually we should be faced with this with the, the basic Unity setup screen. Um, so I'm just going to hit that. It's going to take a few minutes to, for, for Unity to upload. Um, so while it does that, um, Rob and James, can you talk about mods while I go get a drink of water? <laughs> um, I was just going to add a bit about the um, the project. You can have one project with a lot of mods in it. Um, I can, we can probably talk about mods for a, bit, for a minute. Go for it. Um, yeah, uh, might call it stream mod, but you could call it sort of just anything really. And then, say if you've got you want to make a block mod, some geocore blocks, and you want to make another one for some GSO blocks, and then a bit some venture ones. You know, you you could just keep making more mods, and you can use the same project. You don't need to make a new project a new project each time. So it's just quite 
Andy. Thank you, James. I don't know what you said, but it, I'm sure it was very clever and insightful. What did you say? Um, I was just calling you names. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, good. I expect nothing less. <laughs> oh, Eisenwolf, good idea. Um, Eisenwolf suggested a name for the corp of Shiny Sprocket. Should we go with that chat? Has anyone got any more, any more uh, suggestions for the name of the corporation that we should make? I want to get get your uh, get your ideas in chat. I want to know. Um, here we go. So yeah, this is what I'm talking. You need to take the world setup. It's fir the first time setting up a project. It takes it, should, it won't take this long every time you open your project. Don't worry. Um, it's just got a lot of things to I don't know think about install. I suppose. Here we go. So we end up with something looking a bit like this, or exactly like this, actually. Um, now I'm going to just flip between these two. Um, let me just close a couple of these windows out because I don't need that open. Don't need Discord. I don't need Spotify. Um, I need that music in the background. I have Unity. I have OBS. And I have my Windows. Brilliant. Uh, I'm just going to close these tabs again. Don't need those. So we have Unity. Um, now it's time to install our Unity packages, or yeah, import our our Unity our Unity asset. Yeah, Unity packages. That's it. <laughs> got there in the end. So it's it's so straightforward. You're going to go to assets. You're going to go to import package, custom package. So these are the two asset packages that we downloaded earlier. Um, you can see I already have them installed or downloaded, but I'm going to reinstall the latest version. So I'm going to start with the Steamworks asset pack or Unity package. I'm going to hit open. It's going to think about it for a second. Um, by default, these should all these should all be ticked, um, but you're going to want to select all anyway. Um, just make sure uh, under import, and these are all. I mean, again, I'm not going to bore with. I, I wouldn't even ask James to bore everyone with these details. But these are just all the. Um, this is just a, a, a package that allows us to do different things with Unity. Because right out of the pack, right out of the box, Unity won't. Actually, no, no, James, talk about what this asset package is. What does this asset pack do for the Steam Networks or the Steamworks.net? Uh, those are files, and they do stuff. Good. Um, <laughs> they. Uh... There's scripts in there. Some of them are scripts that represent the data. So like represent a block, represent a corporation, and that data gets sent to the game. And some of it is the code that runs all the uh, custom inspectors and things. So that's, you're about to open the mod designer uh, window. That's got a script for it. So everything in, that you see in the mod tool has a script. Good. There you go. So we can now install import the other package that we downloaded. This is the Terratech mod tool, which, what, is this a similar thing, James? Does this have similar things in it? The, uh, the Steam one. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, we're doing this the other way around. The, the, sorry. The, oh. <laughs> that's all right. The, so the, the Steamworks one is just, uh, it's a package that lets Unity connect to Steam, um, which we need just for the uploading process when you upload to the workshop. Good. And, so, go. yeah, and then the one I thought you were doing first was the Terratech <laughs> mod tool which has code that I've written and some assets, some example assets of like, here's the basic GSO skin, etc. Brilliant. Cool. Well, there you go. So again, similar process. Going to click, going to import, click all, and then click import. And it's going to import that. So that's going to take a second to do. And then pretty much once that's done, we will have... Effectively, we'll, we would have set up our modding tools. So we're now in a good position. And it is that straightforward, guys. That's, I mean, I've done a lot of talking, but that shouldn't take you more than a few minutes, honestly. Honestly, it's, it's actually really straightforward. Um, and eventually, you'll be left with... Um, I mean, I've messed around with my Unity a little bit, so all these pillars and columns and stuff look a bit different. So your version of Unity will look something a bit different to this. Um, but importantly, that Unity package... The Terratech Unity package uh, effectively adds this mod designer, um, this mod designer panel. Um, this is basically what we're going to use to create our mods, um, and then that's it, really. That's that's it. So so we're all set up. This is this is literally all you need. It's just Unity. Um, I'm just going to check the uh, the steps to make sure that we're up to the right steps. Um, so we've imported. So yeah, we're we're good to go, and we can literally create a mod. 
So I'm going to go back to Unity in a second. I'm just going to read the step, the steps to make sure that we're, um, we're up, to, up to date. But again, I know we'll literally read this verbatim. But uh, a mod can consist of skins, blocks, custom corporations. Um, that's it. Um, blocks, but also different types of blocks. So you can have guns, weapons, and wheel, uh, guns, wheels, and cabs. Um, you may want to create a mod that contains only custom blocks or only skins for existing corporations, or maybe build your own unique corporation with its own blocks. So important to note that even though in this sort of tutorial i'm going to be creating a whole corporation i'm going to add blocks to it i'm going to add skins to it if you wanted to just create a skin or adjust a skin for an existing corporation you can do that there's absolutely you know that that's what we've made the tools for you can you can do that and it's 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 that is really straightforward you wouldn't even need to create your own skins if you just wanted to change the color of gso and i've done it in the tutorial video for the creating a skins video on youtube go check it out um I'm literally just changing the color of the GSO, or sorry, the Geocorp texture to purple, and it looks purple in game. And it is that straightforward. It's very clever. Um, if anyone wants to see what sort of thing is already there in the modding community, um, I'm just going to drop a link in the chat for the, the workshop mods page so you can see like what sort of thing people have done. Because some people, some of them are just a single skin, some of them are full sets of skins, and some of them are blocks. So there's a whole variety. There's a lot of stuff. But for the sake of trying to get as much done today as we can, um, we're going to be doing a whole corporation. Lovely. So I'm going to head back to Unity. Um, and this is this is how easy it is to create a mod in Terratech, everybody. This is how easy it is. Um, I'm going to call the mod... Uh, I'm just going to call it Stream Mod, because we're, we're, we're naming the mod, <coughs> um, not the corporation yet. That'll come later. Um, I'll put an, I've put a name in for my mod. I've hit the plus button. It's going to think about it, and I've created a mod. Chat, that's, it's that easy. The stream's finished. Uh, thanks for joining, everybody. We'll see you next week where we're going to do other stuff. No, that's, the mod is created, right? So I can list it. It should be listed under the, the mod section here. Uh, I'm going to select the mod that I just made, the stream mod. Um, and that's it. I have a mod. And now I need to put stuff in that mod. Does that make sense? That should make sense. So like we mentioned earlier, and like James has mentioned, we've got skins, we've got blocks, and we've got corporations. Um, now, I, I did cover this earlier, but for the sake of um, brevity and getting through this rather quickly and me and, and saving you the painful experience of watching me try and um, 3D model blocks and create UI ma UV mapping. UV mapping? Rob, I can never get that bit right. Um... UX mapping. What's it? What is it, Rob? I always get it wrong. UV. Mapping. UV. Yeah. Yeah. UV mapping. Um, again, I won't bore you with that. But um, I already have a texture pack and a, a, a 3D model already set up that Rob sent me. Um, but just assume that throughout that whole this whole process, I've already done that. Um, so, I guess first things first. Let's create a corporation. Do you think? Uh, sorry, Rob and James. Should I? What's the first things that I should be doing now then? Should I, if I'm creating a corp, I should go and create a corp and assign my texture to it, right? If you're creating a new custom corp, then yeah, make the uh, corporation with its textures first. Cool. If you're, yeah, you're, uh, you're, if you're, sorry. Okay. Go on, Rob. I say if you're adding blocks to an existing corporation, you don't need to go through that steps, but yeah. we will because we're making a ring. Okay, cool. So we'll start making. We'll start off making a corp. Um, chat. What did we say we were going to call our corp? Um, I'm just going to go with uh, Eisenwolf. Call it Shiny Sprocket. So I'm just going to paste that in there. Shiny Sprocket. I'm going to hit create, and um, that's it. So I've created a new corporation. Again, really straightforward. Uh, and now I need to edit that corporation. I've created that corporation within my mod. I now need to edit it. So we're going to hit edit. And it's going to give me this lovely little uh, feature. And uh, I just, I bet it's, it's just a case of form filling. Um, so the, the corp name is Shiny Sprocket, so that's going to be abbreviated to SS. Um, display name, it's going to display as Shiny Socket. Shiny Sprocket, I beg your pardon. Um, and I mean, we'll use the, the payload corp assets for this. Um, do I need to import them, Rob? Oops, I don't think I've imported them. No, I haven't yet. So, assuming I have all the things that I need for my skin, right? Um, yeah, you'll need to import the textures and everything you need to make the corporation into your 
project. Cool. Right, I'm just going to go to a close up because I need to look at something quickly. Uh, so this is a case. I feel like this is a bit of a case of a chicken or the egg. Do I? Should I? At what point now should I have created my skins and my block? Should I have done this before I created my mod or not? <laughs> Silence. Sorry, I was distract, uh, distracted by the uh, being censored. Who's being censored? Oh yeah, whoops. Um, yeah, do you want to send me the link in Slack and I can just copy over? Because I can, I can post links. Um, right, so here we go. Let's get rid of that. Thanks, Rob. That was my Slack, by the way, chat. I'm going to get a lot of Slack messages from Rob, just so everyone knows. Um, so let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the game. Nope, that one. Thank you. Um, so Rob sent me this earlier. This is a an example folder uh, using example textures for the Payload Corporation, um, and it's got 3D models in there as well. So I'm going to be using basically all of these. So what I'm going to do is drop these onto my desktop, so I have them to hand and then in unity i'm going to head over to um that's fine so we this this middle pillar here between these three um is our project folder this sort of lists all the assets that we have in our project um i'm going to go to where all the other sample assets are um in from the uh, asset packet that um package that, that, that we've downloaded um these are already these are pre-installed. So these are all the ones that come for. Well, we have a, a GSO example block. This is one that uh, that, we've, that we've included in just as, as in, in the package. So you can use that from the get-go. So I think the um, in the documentation, the advice is to put it into the your own mod folder. Oh, interesting. So which mod? Which folder would that be? Do I create one? Uh, it should have created the folder. Now you've created your mod. Um, James, well, do we know where that would be? There is a mods folder, I think, isn't there? And then in, within that will be blocks. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So I am literally going to go into my new folder. Uh, so stop. Mod all into the blocks folder and your textures for the skin into the skins folder. So these are all the 3D models um, from the Payload Corp. Um, and I'm now going to pop some skins into the other folder. And it's, you can just drag and drop it. Pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to go back into Slack. Um, Is that sorry, Rob? Is that the link to just the Steam Workshop page for mods? Is that all it is? Yes. Cool. All right. So in chat, I've just oh, that doesn't work. Oh, Rob, that link that link looks weird. Anyway, uh, does that work? That should not. Is that going to work? Okay, she's going straight to the workshop. That's fine. Um, but head over to the I workshop. Think, Sorry, Rob, go on. So there's a question for Virtue, whether it's all parts. I think it means the individual models. Um, I think it's just because there are separate SBX files for each block. So although Matt's only making a gun today, there's actually about six different model, uh, models there. Cool. Good the, um, the parts of the gun are all in one model. Okay, that makes sense. So the link that I've try to send you in chat. Um, I'll take you to the Steam Workshop, um, and from there you can filter by mods. Um, and these are all the mods that are on here. So go check them out. They're really, they're really cool. Uh, back into Unity. Here we go. So we've installed, we've imported our skins and our blocks. Um, so like I said earlier, if if chat, if if there's an appetite, I'm more than happy to go through creating texture packs and 3D block models. 
Um, we can do that at a later stream, but I, it just it'll take too long to do it today. Um, but if we want to, I'm more than happy to do that, and I can even, you know, I I, I can learn as we can learn as we go. Um, so that'll be fun. Um, cool. So we've imported our assets into Unity, and now we need to assign skins to our new corporation. And for all, for all intents and purposes, you can apply the same sample assets that we have for the existing corporations. These can all be found, I, I mean, I went through them a bit earlier, um, but all the sample assets are in here. And you can assign for better future, Geocorp, GSO, Hawkeye, Rescue Research, and Venture. They're all in here. And you could, if you wanted to, create or just duplicate an existing corporation just to see how it works. There's absolutely nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, first things first, we need to add a an icon. This is actually should be uh, a logo, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a logo. Um, I found this. I was very proud of myself. Um, this little line of text should say um, icon, uh, should say uh, logo. Uh, it does say icon, which can get a bit confusing. But we're going to use the pay Payload Corp logo. Uh, that's going to go in there. That's the logo that's going to appear in game next to um, in your sort of inventory and other places where uh, the logo might be needed. Um, so we've assigned that. We've given it a name. Um, uh, and then we need to select what campaign reward crates you get from campaign. Um, so I quite like Better Future, so I'm going to say Better Future. And this basically just means... I mean, James, do you mind just explaining what, what this option does? Yeah, I can do. Um, so current, we don't have custom XP levels or anything, um, because that would get a bit out of hand if you had lots of custom corporations. So the way we, we've done it... Uh, we also don't have custom missions or anything. So the way we've done it for the moment is um, you choose a corporation to piggyback off. So if, for example, I've made a corporation that looks a bit sort of... Uh, scrappy and tech, uh, sort of um, bulldozery sort of style. I could say it's sort of it's tied to GeoCorp, but that choice is entirely up to you. Um, it's just whatever feels best for you. What that means is if I've picked GeoCorp, then whenever I get a GeoCorp reward crate or unlock a new GeoCorp reward rank, then I'll get the same rewards for my custom corp. And uh, I think it's also the same rules apply for like whether blocks should appear in shops. Yeah. Cool. All right. That explains a lot. Thanks, James. But I'm going to use Better Future because um, I quite like Better Future. Uh, once we've set, selected all that, we're going to hit Create Skin. And this is where we assign our textures to our mod. So these are the default skins that will be assigned to the Payload Corporation. Um, and I'm literally just going to go through and select each, each relevant um, texture. And again, you would have created these in advance. Um, you would have created these beforehand um, before we imported them. Here they go. So we're going to go with the payload icon, which is this one. And then it's going to appear in here. Good stuff. Now the albedo texture. Go away. Uh, then we're going to go through the emissive texture. Now again, I need to reiterate, I'm, I've am i skipped a big part of the actual creating a mod process, just for the sake of speed. Um, but you would have created all of these yourself and you would have UV mapped them to your block. Um, emissive, that's what I'm to. Um, so again, apologies if we're sort of rushing through, if you feel like we're rushing through this, but if you are trying to do this yourself, by all means, you can use the sample textures that are already in the mod. Um, play around with them in, in Photoshop um, and see how you get on. We're going to use the metallic skin now, uh, the metallic texture now. Uh, Matt, we've got other streams and YouTube videos out there, haven't we? We do. So. There's, um, yeah, sorry, yeah. There's, there's, we have tutorial, um, YouTube tutorials uh, um, that we've made that go through step by step creating a, a block. Um, if you need help, well, yeah, we go as far as this. We go as far as, as, as terms of um, the Terratech mod tools. There's obviously loads of support and, and tutorials for things like Blender and even Photoshop, that sort of stuff. And, and you know, and, and a cursory Google um, will show you what you need to know about UV mapping and, and actually how you can create a 3D model with, with textures on it. Um, so yeah, it's all out there. Um, we have... 
our own um, sort of guides, but um, like I say, they're all uh, for, for just for the, for the terror text stuff. Now, you'll notice, talking of UV mapping, I've applied the textures using uh, the, the textures that we've created, and this example tech looks a bit weird, and that's because of you, what we call UV mapping, um, and that's, again, Rob's going to correct me here, but that just determines where this, how the skin lies around the mesh of the block. And right now, these are referencing points. Obviously, these should be these X's should be attach points. Um, so it's all just a bit skewed. But that's because this is a GSO tech and not a payload corp tech. So let's start creating a um, a block to go in our corporation. So that's it. We've created a corporation. It's that straightforward. And again, I've I've, I've waffled a bit. But it is, it is so easy. There's, what, five things to fill in? And then you've put in your texture pack. And then you're, you've created your corporation. And now we can create a block to go in our corporation. So I'm going to head over to the blocks section. I'm going to give our block a name. I'm going to call it just a... Uh, oops. Uh, what did we call our mod? Sorry. Shiny sprocket. Actually, let's call it SS. Uh, should we make a wheel or should we make a gun? I'm going to make a gun. SS gun. And SS gun doesn't really sound... Well, we'll go with it. Um, and again, like we do with the corporation, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to hit create. It's going to create my block mod. Um, and again, like we do with the corporation, I'm just going to hit edit. And it's going to allow me to edit it. Now, this is the beauty. And this is where all of James's work has come to fruition. You can see the payload corp or... Sorry. The why is wrong with my memory? Uh, the sh the shiny sprocket corp will appear as an option that we can select, and I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, I'm going to call this the S S. I don't know why it does this, James. Do you know why it takes forever for me to input letters? Um, I'm not sure. It might be that it's refreshing every single time you do it. Mm. Which um, I should double check that, but it might be based on whether your Unity is set to auto refresh. Okay, doesn't matter. I've done it. We've persevered. Um, do oh, I need to give it a description, or can I leave that? Uh, put in just the name again, or something, or just okay. put in a single letter. I can copy. I can paste it in. Yeah. There you go. I think it needs to be non-blank. It needs to be what? Sorry. Uh, needs to be non-blank. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's such a coder way of saying it needs to have stuff no. in it. <laughs> Love it. Okay, cool. Um, so we give it a name. We give it a description. We select the corporation that the block is going to go in. This is very important. Uh, and then just some sort of other stuff that you can select. So you can select what grade you want the block to be available in. Um, what blocks? What grades have we got available? So. Okay, so this is interesting. So, James, does the custom corp, the, the custom corp that we created, does that go up to grade five then? Um, it can do. That slider doesn't know what uh, you've picked uh, for the corporation tie-in. Um, so, if you put that as corp as like unlocks at five in Better Future, you just will never be able to get it. So, don't do that. Okay. No. Got it. Yeah. There's there's not quite like perfect verification there. You can do things that aren't technically legal or like won't appear in game. So yeah, just watch out for that. Okay, cool. So make sure your grade, you're setting the grade for your block um, to the level that you chose under your corporation, right? So bed feature only goes up to level uh, grade three. I mean, it really is only GSO that goes to grade five anyway. Um, so if you are selecting your block, make sure it's it's if it, unless it's GSO, just make it three or less for the grade. Otherwise, you, it won't ever appear in campaign. Uh, the category, ooh. Um, so what do we call this then? Do we we go, we're making a, a weapon, right? A gun. So I'm going to give it a a weapon category. Um, I'm going to keep. You know, I'm, I feel quite. You know, I, f I feel quite uh, generous. I'm going to keep it cheap. I'm going to give it give it one block buck. Uh, I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna make it really rare. <laughs> um, so you can select the rarity. So this just obviously affects. Um, well, sorry, the price obviously is how much it costs in game, uh, in the trading stations. 
the rarity obviously is how uh, frequently it's going to appear in in loot in crates things like that um damage type let's call it oh it's a gun so it should just be standard um now I don't know if I don't actually know enough about these armor type or these damage types. Um, James, do you want to just talk about what what, what these ones mean? Can I pass to Rob? Rob, do you know? Uh... <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> oh no! I picked you up as the masterminds, guys. You've made me look like a fool. No one knows. Um, I'll, I'll, I think it's something to do with how the different damage, different weapon types, different damage, damage types. No, hold on. It's <laughs> because weapon, weapon, weapons have damage types and uh, blocks have damage types. Uh, there is a thing on the wiki, as Virtu has just pointed out. Um, it's something like if you, like a beam weapon or a Geocorp grinder is good against rock. So if you make a block made out of rock, it'll be weak to those weapons. Um, yeah, the wiki has like the full list. Okay, so yeah, Virtue says there in a, in, a, in, a, in a very good way. It says it's how damage types interact with materials. Um, okay, cool. So it's 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 literally like a rock paper scissors situation where if you have a you know if you have a rock a rock block and someone has a block that counters that, you then take more damage. But vice versa, your a rock block might be stronger against a different type of weapon. So um, pick which one fits your block the best. It's generally a good idea to sort of like I say, pick the one that that fits your block the best. So this is, it's a weapon, so it's not, it's not really an armoured block anyway, or it's not going to take any sort of damage, so I'll just leave it standard. Because it's definitely, I mean, maybe, maybe Volatile might be interesting, because it's a weapon, it may be, you know, it may explode um, when it's, maybe I'll do that. Yeah, maybe I'll do that, actually. Um, I think Volatile means that it explodes. I could be wrong. Um, I'm not going to let it unlock with a licence. I'm going to let it um, just be there um, when you need it. Um, and then, obviously, these are the other criteria you can adjust. So max health, I'm going to leave it as 250 and mass as 1. It's not a big gun, so I'll leave it at 1. Um, now, this is where it gets interesting. So if I was creating just a a 1x1 one one block, like a very basic static block that didn't do anything, it had a zero functionality, I could leave this bit blank and create the physical prefab and block JSON. Now, that GSO, GSON is a type of file. James will know all about this. I call it J well, Everyone calls it JSON because it, it's basically JSON without the A. <laughs> I can't believe I had to describe that. But you get my point. Uh, so if you're creating a static block like that, you can go and create that, and you can then, once you've got your block model, you can attach a mesh to it, and we'll come on to the meshes and stuff in a second. Um, that's all pretty straightforward. But because we're creating a gun, I'm going to select gun, just gun, because it's none of these other things. It's not a wheel, it's not a cab, it's not a fuel tank, it's not a fabricator recipe, and it's not an anchor. Um, interestingly, you could, if you were making a gun that was also an anchor, you could attach those. You could do that, right, James? You can attach different um, templates to your block, right? Yeah, you can do whatever, uh, whatever combination you like. Cool. Like we have um, the AI cabs are both a cab and an anchor. Brilliant. Yeah. So now that we're ready, we can create the physical prefab and block JSON. So I'm literally going through this step by step. I'm going to hit create physical prefab and block JSON. And what that's going to give me is a physical prefab. So we've created the physical prefab and now I need to edit it. So I'm going to click on edit physical prefab and that throws up this thing on the left under our inspector tab. So it's by default on Unity, your hierarchy, your projects and your inspector are all in the same kind of column. Um, but because we're going to be flipping through them each separately, I've separated them out into their own column just to make it easier. Um, good. Okay, cool. So we have a physical prefab um, for our block. Uh, Rob, what is a physical prefab? The physical prefab is a list of components that make up that block. So it's where you're going to put meshes, colliders, all the bits that make the block work. Good. There you go. That's your physical prefab. So it's, it's a list of components that basically make up your block, like Rob just said. Um, lovely. Right. Now, this is where I come stuck because this is this is where I get out of my comfort zone. I can do skins. Skins are easy. You just point and click. Um, so I'm going to refer to the... Uh, where's it gone? 
There it is. Uh, we're going to create a block. Um, so I've created my block. I've I'm at, the, I'm at this point, I'm editing the physical prefab. So I'm going to click edit physical prefab to open the prefab in the Unity scene view. Um, you'll need to provide a mesh for your block, which can be exported in the FBX format from your chosen 3D modeling software. So we've already done that. We have our blocks are in here. Here are, here are our blocks. These are the payload core blocks that we mentioned earlier. Um, there's also, like I mentioned earlier, there's, there is the uh, example model, the, the, that sort of GSO 2 by one block, uh, and the sample assets folder. So go check that out if you want to go do this yourself. Um, your block model will need to be UV mapped to match the textures of the corporation to which it will belong. I'll cover all this probably at a later date um, in a separate stream because this is a whole other thing. This is like UV mapping and block modeling is obviously literally what we employ people to do to make TerraTech. Um, it's it's quite, you know, it's, it's, it's quite in depth, but it should be quite simple. Um, we just need to go through it in more detail, but we haven't got time to do it today. Um, textures for each of the TerraTech corporations can be found also in the sample assets folder. Um, and then there's a list of, uh, use the albedo texture from the appropriate corporation as reference when UV mapping. Um, just a few tips and, and tricks. Um, and then obviously how you export your block from Blender. There's a whole guide on how to do that as well. Um, so now we're going to go back to, so we, now we can now start editing our prefab and adding blocks to our um, hierarchy, uh, or sorry, to our uh, prefab. So selecting your block prefab in the hierarchy window will open the properties in the inspector window. So this is where I come a bit stuck. So I'm going to go to, oh, someone show me what to do, James or Rob, what am I doing next? I need to add a block to my, to my mod, right? Uh, what would be a good idea is if in your in project view, you, if you change that, there's a slider down the bottom, put it right down to the lower end so you get a list of all the individual components in your FDXs. Where it says view, that's it. So now, these are your individual FDX files, and if you expand your gun one, you'll see the individual components in it. There's a little arrow next to where it says gun. gun. Just so everyone knows, Rob is watching the stream rather than my screen. Although you can watch my screen. No, you can't because I stopped sharing it. That's why you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I've just realised. Yeah. I'm having to look at the screen about six seconds. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. That's my fault. I'll get good at this one day, I promise. There you uh, go. Uh, I'm so now, now showing my screen, so you can now see what I'm doing. Ah, that's better. <laughs> Um, so the, the various bits in the prefab on the far left, the ones that have model in the name are the, the bits where you need to put the various bits of model. If you start with the base, so click on the, the very top one, gun prefab, sorry, in the, in the, uh, this one, yeah. yeah, click on that. And you'll see in the inspector to the right, yeah, there's a mesh renderer where it as it requires a mesh so you have to drag your mesh from the fbx into that slot so where it says m we use the m prefix just so that we know things and meshes but you can call them what you like but it makes sense to call it something sensible um and you want the base of the gun so where it says so down the, not the top the lower one that one yep if you oh you've lost focus so yeah if you drag that into the mesh slot. The mesh renderer, yeah? Uh, either one, it will populate both. Beautiful. And you can see your mesh in the viewport. If you press F. Ooh, F. Ooh, look at that. Why am I light source in the way? Go away, light source. Oh, okay. It is a light source. Can I move that? Do I... Oh. Oh, no, Rob, I've broken it. It's a light source. You can... Sorry, I'm just gonna, um, there you go. So why is that big light bulb on top of it? Just to have curiosity. Uh, it's because you've got a light in your scene. Oh, can I get rid of that? Just trying to remember how to hide. So at the top of your viewport, where it says gizmos. Top of my your scene view. Towards the right. Yeah. 
dream girl, that was a light. Okay, let's turn them all off somewhere. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm sure we can. Can I just delete? Yeah, all right, done it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so we're back in the block model. Next thing, if you go to Gimbal Base. Gimbal Base? Uh, gimbal Base. That is the point about which the horizontal rotation will take place. So you can leave that in the centre because that's where it's going to happen for this. But you need to change the mesh that's attached to that. And that will be the model mount. That one. Yeah, so that's, uh, there'll be a, a mount mesh in the uh, FBX. Oh, I did it again, whoops. I'm going to drop that into here. Guys, so what we're doing is we're building... I'm just going to talk to chat quickly. We're building our weapon from scratch. So, again, let me reiterate. We would have already made our 3D model in Blender. Um, and now I'm, I've, I've imported my 3D model into Unity. And effectively... Because each part of the 3D model will do something different and have different effects in game, we need to add different prefabs to that part of the block model. So that's why we're going through it step by step individual component by individual component until at the end we have a fully working block mod um or block thing cool right um what next rob what am i doing next to the gimbal base and then you can move it down so it's in the right position do i just use this uh, no undo that oh dear all right i've undone it select, select gimbal base on the left Oh, this one. That's the one, and then move that one down. Okay. The gimbal base is the component that's actually doing the rotation, and the mesh is attached to that, so as long as you move the component into the right place, it'll move how you want it to. Does that look like it's in the right place? It kind of does. I don't suppose it really matters. Um, right, okay, cool. So, let us... I have a real hard time with Unity's camera. Um, I we don't want... control how you're doing it to Sorry? rotate. Oh, That's right, I'll, I'll leave it as it is. Um, so next we're going to move from Gimbal Base onto Gimbal Elevation, right? Yep, so first thing was if you attach the body model to the to model body. And now if you look at it from the side, you'll see that the Gimbal LF needs moving up so that it pivots around that kind of uh, round bit on the side. How do we feel about there? Yep. Is that right? Close enough. <laughs> that's all. We, that's all we need, Rob. Close enough. Um, cool. And then next up is barrel, right? Another barrel one. So model barrel down the bottom. So that is that going to need moving at all? That looks all right. No, that looks alright. Cool. Alright. The bits we will need to move are the various components that uh, do things like spawning the projectile and ejecting the casing. Uh, and they're all listed. So bullet spawn, for example, if you click on that, you'll need to move that to the front of the barrel so that the bullet comes out of there. Cool. Oh, okay, so these are all chat. These are all components, right, that you put into your weapon, into your block, to make it do stuff. And it does cool stuff, and you can you can move it. <laughs> it's really cool. So I'm going to let my weapon spawn from about there. That looks about right. Yeah, that looks fine. We're missing lots of questions in the chat we should probably address. Oh, yeah, if you uh, could. I'm a bit distracted. There's a question about OBJ support. Um, can you use OBJ, but it's... It's a bit of an old format that doesn't really support anything other than texture coordinates. So if you're if you're exporting individual models all at the origin, it would work. But otherwise, it, it's only vertex and UV positions. So it's not really much use if you're doing hierarchical models. Cool. 
Right. Um, I mean, we are about we are past five o'clock, so we're a bit over time. But let's just power through, and we'll get through to the end, and then um, we can see where we go. But we're, we're nearly done. We're nearly done. Is there anything else that I need? So bullet uh, casing spawn. So that's going to come out the top of this. Yeah. So your best bet now is go through that list. Is there anything that needs moving? Move it as we go through them. So yeah, casing. The the Z axis is actually where it comes out. So that's pointing forwards at the moment. Z is the blue one. So I do put it here. Put it so if you rotate it so that the blue points upwards, it will eject the casing. Oh, up. okay. How do you rotate when you uh, need to? Top left of the screen, where you've got a plus movement sign next to that there's a couple of arrows and that's the rotate uh, right right at the top left right over here oh, okay yeah so now rotate that about the red grab the red circle and move it around there you go and if you click back on move it will show you the arrows so you can see which way it's so blue should now be pointing up oh rob you're so good at this you should do this for a living yeah. All right. Cool. Um, muzzle uh, flash. Do we need muzzle? Yeah. So that goes where the projectile comes out, I assume. Yeah. Again, these are all pro these are all um, physical prefabs just for weapons. There's also physical prefabs for wheels and well, actually, there's not that many physical prefabs for um, uh, cabs, but um, many. That'll do. Um, yeah, mainly wheels. Uh, yeah, wheels and weapons are the two. Cabs are just a dumb block unless you put wheels on them. So mm. yeah, they're their own. Lovely. Right. I think that's everything. Muzzle flash. Collider. So if we get through this quickly. We'll just put a collider on the base. If you select the base again. The gimbal base or the whole prefab. The whole base. The top one. That one. And then in the inspector where it says add component, if you click on that. Yep. Oh, I've already done it. Look, look at that. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> box collider. What are you doing box collider for this one? <clears throat> yeah, so if you need the simplest shape that's going to describe your mesh, because okay. the simpler they are, the cheaper they will, will be in processing terms. Okay. So just for chats, the sake of, of people that are watching, you, you, there are three different, four different types of collider that we can use. There's a box collider, a capsule collider, a mesh collider, and a sphere collider. Um, the point of this is you need to collect, select the, the right collider that's appropriate for your block. Um, we'll go with box collider because it's the easy, like Rob said, it's the simplest and easiest. If you are doing weird kind of like spheres, if you're not trying to make a ball, obviously a sphere collider is going to be best. Uh, I'm not pers I'm not sure what a capsule collider or a mesh collider does. Does someone want to try and explain so what they do? Box is anything that's rectangular, as you can see that that's just created there. Um, sphere is spherical. Capsule is an like a cylinder with spherical ends. But anything more complex than that, you might need a, a mesh collider, which is a, a mesh that you export from your 3D software. Cool. Thanks, Rob. But, uh, so in this case, you probably you need the bottom of that to be above the AP, otherwise it will intersect other blocks. Got you. If you drag the bottom face up, yeah. so it's level with the bottom of the block, that's it. Do you not know, be really helpful if you need to just snap? Like you know, with like Photoshop, it snaps like your boundaries and stuff to other other layers. Uh, be... Yes, you can with maps, but not with colliders. Oh god, Unity. Anyway, sorry, that was that was almost that... technical. That was verging on being quite in, quite um, clever. <laughs> right. So, so go now on. you need to edit the filled cells and the APs. So if you click on filled cells in the middle of that, yep, you've got one already there at the base. Boom. So for those that don't know, just quickly, I'm just going to recap quickly what we did with the collider. So I adjusted um, each pane, each face of the collider, so it, it filled, it covered the whole block. Um, filled cells, Rob, what do filled cells do? Uh, it just describes how many cells that that block is going to take up when you attach it to your tech. So cool. if it's a one by one block, it will just be the one cell, but it means no other block can occupy that space. And then attach points are exactly what you imagine they are. We all know what attach points are. You can select where you want your block to attach to other blocks. And because we've only, using our 3D model, we've only got one attach point at the bottom here. That's the only place I'm going to put one. Um, you can select and deselect quite quickly and quite easily. Um, you can have it anywhere. Um, just by left mouse button clicking. 
I'm going to go back to field cells because I've sort of glossed over this quite quickly. Um, you can add field cells as much as you like. Um, but obviously you want to, again, similar to Collider, you want to put the, uh, the field cells on that best represent your block. Oh, no, I've gone the wrong way. Um, you can cr you can hold um, shift to, no, control to remove blocks or field cells that you put in and click. Um, or you can uh, hold shift and it will add uh, a field cell in that row. So it's a quicker way of adding field cells. Beautiful. So we've got our attach point. We've got our field cells. Rob, is our block ready to go? Uh, yes, it is. You just need to edit the JSON if you want to change any parameters from the defaults. Lovely. So we should we we'll do that now. Um, and again, if this is brushing over too quickly, we can go into this in more detail at a later date. Um, but we have our our very basic block. Um, I'm going to show you what our block looks like. So we've we've created our block. We've adjusted. We've moved everything around so it looks like we want it to look. We've we've messed with the free the prefabs. So the muzzle flash is going to look good. The projectiles are going to come out where we want it to come out. The um, the, the bullet casings are going to come out where we want it to come out. All this cool stuff is working. It's good. Now what we need to do, or what we can do if we wanted to, is is, is edit some advanced properties uh, or the block JSON. So I'm going to click that. Oh, it's going to open vi Visual Studio. Have we got time to do this? Mm. No, I'm going to skip over this for now. We're going to keep this simple because I don't want to confuse anyone or myself more than I absolutely have to. Um, we have a feature where the, the well, James added a feature where the uh, JSON is automatically written for you using some default values. So you don't you don't have to change anything if you're happy to keep a, a GSO machine gun as the, as the default, which, which for purposes should be fine if you just want to test your mesh and then yeah. you can go edit those properties when you're happy with it. Beautiful. Okay, great. So we'll, we'll, if we want to go into that, that feels more advanced. I mean, it's literally advanced. It's in the name, guys, advanced properties. Uh, we can cover that later if we want to, but for now we'll leave that because like, like Rob said, it's all default. It should all work. Um, but we've created our block. It's all there. What we need to do now is click generate previews and what unity is going to do is is compile everything that we've done um and create a preview and it's going to say there's missing icon uh what have i done wrong uh, try pre uh, generate previews again it sometimes needs to if it's in the okay there we go so yeah just give it the old college try give it another another shot and what you're looking for is this green tick once you've got this lovely green tick you are ready to export so let's do that Think you need to update your skin because one of the textures was wrong. Oh, how do I do that? You click on corporations. There you go. You've used the um, icon texture in the bottom right. Oh, whoops. How's it done that? You can actually drag and drop those textures from the. In, uh, from the oh, project. you can. Oh, okay, so I was doing it a bit of a weird way. I'm going to just generate previews from my corporation just to fix that and then head over here and hit generate previews on this one as well. Okay. I'm going to do it again. Okay, Rob, it's not working. Rob, it's not working. It's worked in the in the preview. The, the, if you select the objects in the hierarchy, they will change. I think there's a, there's a bug there. Okay. But, well, they don't, they're just not showing you in viewport until you actually edit them. Got ya. Oh, okay, well, there you go. Looks great. Looks great. Okay, so we've got our weapon. We've got our gun. We've done it. We've made a corporation. We've made a block to put in our corporation, and it's got a skin. It's got its own custom skin. So we've done it all. And now we can export our mod. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. I'll go through the local export today. Um, I'm not going to upload this to Steam because um, that's a whole other thing. But what we're going to do now is we can, we can export our mod locally onto our computer it will just generate a file um and we can we can move that into our mod folder on steam uh, in our steam mod folder in our steam game folder for terratech and it will load in game so what we need to do now is i'm going to open steam i'm going to go to my library this is my work account yeah i'm going to go to terratech i'm going to right click i'm going to go to properties yeah, okay, I'm going to go to Manage, I'm going to Browse Local Files, and it's this folder that I need. This directory is the is the directory that I need for my local export. Um, so I'm going to select Select Local Game Folder, 
I'm then going to copy that directory into here. James is going to tell me that I've done something wrong. James? Have I done something no. wrong? Okay, cool. Nice. There you go. Um, so I've selected the... So that's that's a really crucial step because... Um, now, James, why do I need to do that? You, you, you'll you be able to explain why we need to do that. Sorry, wait. Wait, what? The, um... the select, why have I got to select um, the local export or the local folder for where I export the game to? Um... As opposed to the Steam upload, do you mean? Or yeah. Um, so this is just so you can test it quickly. Um, so you pick, you tell it exactly where the folder is, and it will put the the, the exported version of the mod in there. Um, so it will just run it directly from local files. That means you don't have to upload it to Steam every time you want to test it. Cool. Excellent. Okay, I thought it was more complex than that, but it's literally if you wanted to do a local export, you can do it on your computer and test it straight away. So we've done it. We've done everything, and the game, the the mod is ready to export. So I'm going to hit export. It's going to do all the business in the background and it's going to give me a, a, a warning to say that it couldn't put the game, the, the mod directly into the folder um, because we weren't able to add... Oh, again, James knows all about that. It's going to think about it. Um, has it worked? Do I need to export again? No. Oh, there is some. So, for some reason, the Unity is not very good at copying to administrator protected folders. Um, and I looked into this for quite a while and figured that it's not going to work. So, some it will. If it doesn't work, it should open up two folders for you and say, "Can you drag and drop it?" Um, that's just a, an annoying quirk of Unity. We don't have any messages. Let's try. It. I'll hit the old export button again. See what happens. Yeah. So it has gone to the local mods folder. So let's just try and find where that is then. Uh, it should be in here. It should be in this folder, but it's not. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ah, you're um, in the local export box. It says Terratech, or when you've actually got it installed as Terratech Beta. That's if you've been playing the game or had if this, if it was installed on this computer before like two years ago when we went in, when we did full release. Um, your install folder will be named slightly differently, so watch out for that. Okay, so rather than doing it the first way that I did it, do it the second way that I did it. So don't go into go into properties and go into the local files mm. on your properties. I originally went in as uh, manage browse local files. That's different. Oh no, well, come back. I'll just chuck that in there. Um, No, nope. come on. There we go. Right, let's go into that folder. Okay, great. So let's select that. Right, that makes sense. Okay, so I, I, I skipped that step. I think I must have skipped over it. Um, we're gonna hit export. Okay, we came over. We've we found an issue and we've we've averted it. Good. Uh, and then we go. So this is the manual move. This is what James was just mentioning. Terratech is installed in in a James. Work on your grammar. Come on. Terratech is installed in an administrator list <laughs> folder. You need to manually drag the, fold, the folder Steam mod from Steam app. Okay, so I can literally show you how to do that. So it's going to pop open two windows, two Explorer windows. Uh, I'm going to take my... I'm actually going to go up a level in here. So this is the Stream mod. This is the mod that we made. I'm going to drag this over here into the local mods folder. And that's it. I'm now going to go into Terratech. It's going to take a minute to load up. And when I load into Terratech, our lovely mod will be in there. Before I do that, actually, I just thought I need to... This could get confusing. So just to... I'm already subscribed to the Payload Corp on the workshop. So to make sure that that doesn't get confusing, uh, I'm going to just quit out of that because I need to unsubscribe. I need to uninstall my uh, my mod. Oops, wrong way. Subscribe items. 
Uh, so I'm just going to unsubscribe to the payload corp. That's going to basically remove it from my uh, from my game. I'm now going to load up Terratech again. Oh god, I need to sort this camera out. This is crazy. <sighs> and we should be there. It doesn't. I'm not a community call. That's wrong. Let's make a mod. Good. Fix that. Um, and then we're going to load into the game. And it's going to be it's going to be fixed. So you saw. I just to recap quickly. I've un, I've unsubscribed from the payload corp because um, I didn't want anyone to get confused. Um, but it will it will show we will have the payload or the not the payload corp. We will <laughs> we will have the. Oh, oh. Uh, here we go. We will have the shiny sprocket corp. That's that's literally what I was trying to find. Um, Ace Bar is in chat as well. Ace Bar is those that do unofficial mod support or modding will, will recognize Ace Bar. And they're, they're answering there. They're curtailing some questions. They're doing very well. Now I can load into, I'm just going to go into R&D Labs. I can make non important stuff important like this. Thanks, Blue911911. That's really helpful. That's really important. Uh, plan James is chatting in chat as well. God, James, you're really good. And here we are. We're in game, guys. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. So, we've created a corporation. And down here, you should see it, is our corporation, Shiny Sprocket. Guys, it worked. And here's my gun, the SS gun. Maybe need to change that name, thinking about it. And if I plop it down, it fits. There's my gun. Guys, we made this. Chat, I made this with these hands. Well, I didn't... Well, you know. I, Rob made the, the... But I've... You know, I modded it. I've added it to the game. This wasn't here earlier. This didn't exist in this capacity. And now look at it. It's a weapon and it fires stuff and it's got casings that come out. Maybe... Maybe I need to do that at an angle. Hey, that's something I could change. So, I've got my mod... Um, my gun works. It looks good. I'm really happy with it. I'm actually, I'm really, I'm so, I'm so made up right now. I've got shivers, guys. Um, but one thing I'm, maybe I don't like about it is the, um, the casings. The casings come out and they go back in. It just looks a bit weird. So, to change that, I could just go back to, oh, go back to Unity. And I could go to my, my casings. And I could textures as well. You need to regenerate the previews. You've got um, something wrong with the combined metal sleeve at the bottom there. Oh, well, I think it looks fine. Anyway, there we go. Chat. That's it. We're a bit over, but in about an hour, or just over an hour, I've created a, a mod, put a created a corporation, put a block in my corporation, and export it to the game. And you can see it here. Woo! There we go. My voice hurts. I need to lie down. It was very stressful, but we made it. Um, I'm going to leave it there, chat. Um, everybody, say a massive thanks to uh, James and Rob. Please, um, they've been amazing and really helpful. Um, as always. Um, Shamoni says, uh, Terratech mod tool on Mac loads in Unity with error CS11644 feature inter inter interpolated strings. No one wants interpolated strings. It cannot be used because if it is not part of the C sharp four language specification. Um, ooh, that sounds. That sounds spicy. Um, Zugbug, I'm not sure how to fix that. Oh, sorry, Shamoni. I'm not sure how to fix that. Um, you know I that? have an idea. There might be uh, trial load up the Unity instance so I can see what's uh, going on. Um, actually, if you go to like file settings in Unity, there's um, is it file play settings? There is 
Oh. Uh, maybe build settings? Build settings. Um. Oh, no, it's not there. Sorry. Um, it might be player settings in the bottom left. Um, somewhere. And <laughs> this, will, this will be available on Google. Uh, like if there's any of you just search it on Unity forums and stuff. Um, you can change the target C sharp version, and that's probably what's gone wrong. Uh, is that the default version on Mac isn't the same as the default version on P on PC? Cool. Theory. I won't go into any more than that. Lovely, Charmini. That should answer your question. Basically, what James is saying is is just Google it. Just get on Google. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Ping, ping me on Discord if you if you have more yeah. questions. That's that's basically yes. Yeah, what I'm going to say now is if you if you if you have any any questions, anything else that you sort of feel like you want answers on, head over to Discord, our Discord server. Um, I'm going to just ping a link to it now, um, in chat. Uh, have you seen my lecture on the D shields? Virtue, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Um, I will endeavour. To, to ping it to me. Can you ping it to me on Discord if you're on Discord or just on again on the forums and I'll have a read. Um, Discord, Discord. Okay, Discord isn't doesn't want to open. Uh, where is it? Have I got it in my tray? Here it is. So if you have any questions, head over to the TerraTech Discord. Um, we have a, a whole modding channel, um, which I'm going to send you an invite for now. I'm actually going to let that one run forever. Um, there you go. So in chat, I've just linked uh, uh, a link to our modding uh, official mod support channel on Discord. So if you have any questions, if you feel like I've missed anything or forgotten something, or you sort of a bit confused or perplexed, head over to there and uh, and and ask away because um, it'll be it'll be good. Lovely, right? Um, James and Rob, feel free to stick around in chat. I'm, I'm sure you'd be happy to stick around and answer a few more questions. Um, so they'll be in chat for a few more minutes after this, um, but. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for being awesome, everyone. Go mod. It's really good and fun. All right. See ya. Bye. Say bye, bye. guys. Bye.